fitness, anime, interior decor, chill spots on YouTube, and others are going to be topics of today's video. So if you're interested in either of those, then you probably want to keep watching. I'm pretty sure you haven't heard of some of these series before or YouTube channels. And that's pretty much the whole point of this video. I usually make videos to push myself out of my comfort zone. So I watch and react to videos that I normally wouldn't watch, usually suggested by you guys, or I play video games suggested by you. And it just makes life a little more fun that way, in my opinion. So I figured why not share with you some of the things that I have been into, some of the shows I've watched recently, and maybe that will introduce you to something you haven't watched or something you didn't think you would be interested in, but maybe you want to check it out and then you find out that you're actually interested in that person, in that series, in that topic all together. You know, let's see what happens. I love lifting weights. I love working out. I've always been active. I played sports growing up from soccer, figure skating. I did Taekwondo. Some people don't think that's a sport, but whatever. I did that as a kid. What else did I do? I tried lacrosse for a little bit. I tried rugby. It was all right. Uh, I did some gymnastics, track and field. Like I, I've done a lot of different sports. As I've grown older, I haven't done those sports, right? But I've lifted weights, I've done Pilates, I've done some yoga. So I've always been very active and this is kind of like a big category for me. And I'm always watching fitness content. I'm not necessarily into like vloggers who like vlog their workouts. Like I'm not really into that. I used to be not really anymore, but for this topic, I'm going to start with a show that's all about fitness. Maybe you've heard of it. It is called Fiscal 100. If you don't know what Fiscal 100 is, it's a competition show where a hundred people who are identified as like one of the most fit people in South Korea and it ranges from like gymnasts, gold medalists, like Olympians, um, actors, very fit actors, fitness influencers, a range of sports enthusiasts. Um, like I said, gold medalists, but also like other people who haven't necessarily been to the Olympics, but have proven themselves in their sport. So very fit people with different physiques and they all compete. So a hundred people compete and I'll insert like a small clip here. So you kind of get the idea. But it ranges from one-on-one -on -one battles to team events and a lot of people get eliminated very fast and usually with the two seasons I've seen the most well-rounded fit person is usually the winner. So the not the most strength-based person, not the person with the most endurance. It's usually someone who has everything, like the whole package. And this past season was very eventful. And at first I was hesitant to watch it because after the first season it's kind of the that thing with reality shows where you watch it once and you kind of get the gist and my thinking was oh how can it get better it's just gonna repeat what they did in season one 
and I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it as much. But I did try season two and at first I was hesitant with the contestants. The way they were introduced and their personalities were introduced on the show, it I didn't feel as connected with the contestants as fast as I did with season one. I don't know why, I just wasn't. But I continued watching season two and as more people got eliminated, you were then able to understand and hear from the contestants more, right? Because when there's a bigger group of people, they can only share so much about someone. But when it got down to like the like 50, maybe they cut it in half. You were then able to listen to more of their stories and listen to how they were being impacted by different events, their strategies, team leaders when it was team against team, who they picked, why they picked them. Very fascinating. Okay, so next up is a podcast. I originally started listening to this podcast during COVID and I really enjoyed the fitness content if information that you get from the three guys who run the podcast. But then I eventually started watching them on YouTube because I love seeing during their discussions the face their faces and the like interaction that they have with each other rather than just listening to them. I think that's why there's a lot of YouTube channels in this video that I'm sharing. I like watching like people instead of just listening so this podcast it's called mind pump and they have a lot of great fitness information there are three guys who have been personal trainers in the past and they have a lot of knowledge that they've acquired about fitness that they provide for the listeners of the podcast very entertaining they recently started having discussions around being a father, um, like current events, talking about AI, talking about uh, what, like um, conspiracy theories. So th those are very fascinating. I love conspiracy theories, aliens, government, like all that stuff. It's really intriguing. Um, they also take like live Q and A questions from listeners about fitness or business so that's all very interesting and usually they come out with episodes every day it seems like and they have interviews with different people in the space and they even have sponsors too so a lot of their sponsors are around like lifestyle fitness one of their sponsors is viori i don't know if you've heard of them they're very big right now in the fitness space and um, at leisure wear. What else? Juve, it's red light therapy, expensive stuff. <laughs> but overall, a good combination of entertainment and fitness. So if you like those two, go check out Mind Pump. Some of you may not be interested in this, but I challenge you. If you are into fitness and you've been lifting weights or doing a specific style of workout for a long time try switching it up and if you're gonna switch it up i suggest trying some pilates now <laughs> hold up my boyfriend recently started doing this and he goes to classes at the gym that he works at and he loves it, but I do this at home. There's this channel that I really enjoy. It's called Move With Nicole. It's very relaxing, actually. The music that she uses in the background and stuff, but I think she has really great routines for beginners, for those a little more stable. And the 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minute videos that she does is very taxing on the body especially if you're new this is a new style of working out for you so move with nicole give it a shot 
Let me know if you do and if you like it. <laughs> I know a lot of you are going to be like, uh, no, but that's fine. So next category is going to involve mostly YouTube channels that focus on current events or like updates and what's going on in the world. Not like politically, some of it, but not that's not like the initial focus. So you'll know what I mean when I go through these. First up, Matt Wolf. This is a YouTube channel where Matt, the head of the channel, the updates everyone on AI news. And he usually comes out with videos every week, it seems like, on what has been occurring in the AI world and updates everyone on Apple's AI updates, Google's, and all these different companies. And he has the inside to like what's going on. So I'm interested in what's going on with AI as a lot of you are. So I find Matt Wolf's channel to be very helpful and keeping up to date and it summarizes everything really well instead of me having to go out and look for things myself, which sometimes I'm fine with, but you know, being lazy sometimes, just having a channel dedicated to AI news and updates, very helpful if you're interested. Second is a channel I've talked about on my live streams, on like the last video I uploaded, and it's Penguin Z0. Moist Critical, also known as, he's a streamer on Twitch, he's a YouTube channel person, he's, you know, he's been on the internet for a while, but I recently discovered him this past year. I really enjoy a lot of his videos. He just gives random updates about like TikTok drama, other drama on YouTube. Um, he talks about shows, he ranks animes or video games, and it's just like a, a bunch of topics that he talks about, things that he's interested in. And sometimes I'm also interested in those topics. So I like watching his videos. I think his humor is really good and his videos are very entertaining. And yeah, so a lot of you know already Moist Critical, but there's that. <laughs> so next up is Flagrant. This is also a podcast. I don't listen to the podcast, but I watch the YouTube channel, Flagrant, and it involves four comedians. Head comedian of the show is Andrew Schultz, and he's really funny. Sometimes he, he's a little annoying in my opinion, but a lot of the discussions he has with the people he brings on the show are very interesting and they discuss different topics. I think he had like one of the presidents, uh, not current president, but a previous president's like brother on there or something like that. I think it was part of the Bush family. So what is that term they would use for the powers that be that are not elected, but able to exert immense force and control, i.e. the people yeah, at the- I, I, didn't, I didn't listen to that one, but yeah, he has different um, guests on the show and they talk about current events, what's happening in politics, what's happening in like on social media and drama and kind of similar, I would say, to Penguin Z Zero, but more of like a high production style. So yeah, if you're, I don't know if they, and they make a lot of jokes so, <laughs> and I don't agree with a hundred percent of what they say on these shows, on these podcasts, but it's very entertaining. And I think it's good to listen to opinions that aren't necessarily your own and it's good to hear different things in regard to topics that you're interested in. So different sides. 
good to listen to different sides. So yeah, I think that's all for the updates channels. For those of you who are interested in like watching about styling your home or figuring out new setups or I don't know, just interior decor, check out the channel Paige Wessel, I think her last name is. I love her demeanor, her calmness in her videos. It's very casual watching. It's not like, put this here, put that there. Um, she just kind of shows you what she's been interested in. Sometimes I like the videos that she does of looking at things her viewers send to her and are thinking of purchasing. This person was wondering what type of window treatments she should do on these on these really nice windows. I actually love all of the molding and the wood that is around the window, so I wouldn't necessarily cover it up with curtains because it's so thick and I honestly think it's very pretty. So I would just stick some nice simple blinds right in the middle. I wouldn't go over the molding. I would go in the window because I, I just think it's pretty. I don't think you need curtains. So I like to watch those just to get ideas of how people are thinking about their spaces and different houses, different apartment layouts, what they're thinking of doing because I currently live in the space I live in but that will change most likely and sometimes you get tricky spaces and to hear from someone else of what they're thinking also important I think if you, if you want a cozy space. Okay I had to look it up because I didn't have it prepared on my list here but her TikTok is Julie Jones Designs. She is so helpful in thinking about your space and I love that you can see examples of different spaces and layouts and you just get different ideas. My clients with corner fireplaces really seem to struggle with the layout. Fireplaces can be lovely features of rooms, but that doesn't mean they have to be the focal point of the room. And well, as you can see, I darkened the fireplace black heavy TV cabinet with the TV. Height on the end of the room really helps ground spaces. We have so yeah, if you're interested in interior decor or learning more about how to set, set up a space or just get ideas, I suggest those two creators. These are the shows that I've recently been watching. I haven't watched all of them fully. I like watch a few episodes and then I jump to another one and then I jump to another one. So I'm slowly getting through this list. Okay, so I don't have any spoilers, thankfully, if you haven't watched these. But if you have, please no spoilers. Thank you. First up, is a Netflix anime that I recently learned about. It's Forest of Piano. Now I don't, that doesn't sound right. So it might be a translation issue or maybe it's correct, but it's a Netflix anime that focuses on a piano that was left by its owner in a forest and it's a very difficult piano to play for, I don't really understand it, but it's very difficult to play. And the owner of this piano, who was a famous pianist, could only play. It was like built for him. But this young kid, I think he's like middle school or something, he finds the piano in the forest and he's really the only one who can play. And it turns out the boy who's able to play the piano in the forest is the student of the pianist who got in this accident and left the piano in the forest in the first place. Crazy and that's as far as I've gotten. He enters a p 
piano competition and I'm pretty much guessing he's gonna win. He's like this prodigy and it, it's really cute and wholesome but I do have to say I wasn't a huge fan of the animation style. It's very simple. It's not as pleasing to the eye as a lot of current uh, modern animes. It reminded me of a video game animation of like how they do that backstory thing and it's like kind of choppy but you know not, nothing too difficult to understand about what's going on but yeah also it has really nice music like if you like the sound of piano music you know also very calming and gentle pretty good next up is an anime called psychopaths now there are a lot of episodes to this anime and I'm glad because I love the concept of this anime and I'm just gonna read from Google like the summary of it because I don't want to mess it up it is a Japanese cyberpunk psychological thriller anime series produced by production IG it is set in a dystopia of Sybil Systems Governance of Japan. The plot follows the young woman, Akane Tsunamori. She is introduced as a novice inspector assigned to Division 1 of the Public Safety Bureau's Criminal Investigation Division in charge of solving crimes with latent criminals, which are called enforcers. It follows this young woman. She's top of her class and she decides um, to go and join the basically police force. She starts off not on a good foot. She has to balance her own perspective of morality, her own perspective of the world with how the government and the system says she has to view the world. So she, it's like a constant battle and it, it's a mental fuck for her, really. And there, she's in a lot of situations where she's questioning what they're telling her to do. So it's really cool. Um, the main like criminal that she pairs with is the best cool. He's always, why are in animes like the main male character so cool? He he's freaking awesome i love him he's so smart um he he used to be i'm not even gonna give it away i think you should watch it if that like summary intrigues you at all i would suggest watching it now this if you are into gaming i suggest watching this anime sometimes it's it's like a little kiddish in my opinion how are we going to keep you hidden once we get to town? Mm. Well, if you're really worried... <laughs> Didn't expect that, huh? Did I lose you? No, this is a different beast altogether. Sunraku! Crunchyroll has a summary. Great. I'm just going to read it. So, Rakuro... Rakuro Hizatome only cares about one thing. Beating crappy VR games. He devotes his entire life to these buggy games and could clear them all in his sleep. One day, he decides to challenge himself and play a popular god tier game called Shangri-La Frontier, but he quickly learns just how difficult it is. Will his expert skills be enough to uncover its hidden secrets? I'm pretty sure it will. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure it will. He's gained all these skills through playing these trashy games and he gets into this top tier game and it pushes his abilities a little further and yeah he gets humbled a few times right now on, Crunch on Crunchyroll I don't think they have all of the episodes with English so I think there's maybe one more episodes that episode that needs English that, that needs to be dubbed. Last anime, Spy Family. A lot of you may have heard of this one. I think they're coming out with a movie or if 
it dropped already. I recently saw a YouTube ad on on the movie about the movie, which was surprising. It was the first time that happened. Get your attention really fast with this spy who part of his mission is to obtain a family. So he gets a wife, a daughter, and he seeks them out and he plays at, as part of the mission. He plays this devoting father, tries to get his daughter, his fake daughter into school. And they, the mom is also an assassin. The kid can read minds. It's wild. So these three find each other and it follows the family and them navigating life together as this misfit, misfit family. And the daughters who can read minds is the only one who knows of everyone's jobs and abilities. So the dad and mom have no idea of each other's occupation. So the daughter tries to keep her abilities under wrap while helping with like who she befriends at school, how she performs with her grades at school and all these other things. So it's really cute lighthearted, nothing too complicated. And to wrap it up, I have two, two things, channels, people that I want to mention that didn't really fit into the prior categories. First up, if you're a creator and you like learning about how to create better content or you like listening to other creators on the platform who do what you do and how they are able to monetize their artwork, their videos or whatever. I suggest listening and watching Colin and Samir. They are two guys who have this podcast, another podcast, and they invite creators and interview them and kind of pick their brains about how they got where they are. This funny myth that you, that you need to somehow know what you're doing, but people who know what they're doing don't make interesting work. It's just as simple as that. This is fun. It's still enjoyable. I just recognize that it's my time to pass it on. They talk about kind of current things happening on YouTube, updates, and have discussions that will hopefully help other creators out there. Last up is an artist that music artist that I'm listening to and he is called Teddy Swims he makes a lot of great soulful music and you may have heard his one song like it went viral You're Yeah, Teddy Swims, if you're interested, check it out. His song, um, Lose Control. Wait, I totally forgot. Oh my God. A YouTube channel called Heinz, H-I-N-D-Z. And it's titled by the creator as the number one chill spot on YouTube. Listen, I'm glad that you're here, but... You missed what happened the other day. Right here at the number one chill spot on the internet. You're excited, then you're not excited, so you go do something else. Well, that's the beauty of hindsight. Hindsight is the f***ing homie, bro. So I'm the type of person where, you know, I get an idea, and I get excited about it, and then I get another idea. He has a very slow talking pace. With a calming voice, he has lo-fi music. His live streams are really cool in which he plays lo-fi music in the background while like studying or just working on whatever he's working on and everyone can kind of ask him some questions. Some of his videos focus on motivation, personal growth. If you're interested in stuff like that, check out Heinz channel. That's it.